ever read the paper or have you ever seen news on TV and say to yourself, maybe even out loud, why is this world such a mess? Why doesn't God do something about it? Why is he allowing this calamity in the world? Why do the evil prosper and the righteous suffer? A minor prophet by the name of Habakkuk, he had some answers to these questions. Nobody knows much about Habakkuk except that he lived in the 6th century B.C. during the first part of the Babylonian crisis. His name means to embrace to or to wrestle. He was indeed wrestling with his difficult issues. He is outraged at the violence and injustice of his society. And in fact, he lists six problems, sin, wickedness, destruction, violence, no justice in the courts, and the wicked outnumber the righteous. Not so different from what we are experiencing today. Habakkuk, he tells us of how bad things are, even as if God didn't already know. Woe to the proud. Woe to the greedy. Woe to the, the dishonest. Woe to the violent. Woe to the sensual. Woe to the idolater. And in verse 4, he says, the law is ignored. And so Habakkuk, he wrestles with this evil in his society. If God is so good, why is there evil in the world? And if there has to be evil, why do the evil have to prosper? Habakkuk is one of those good guys. He fears God and does what is right, but it's getting him nowhere. In chapter 1, verse 10, he says, your eyes are too clean to countenance evil. You are not able to put up with wrongdoing. Why then do you put up treacherous people and are silent when the wicked devour those more righteous than they? Well, God answered him. Chapter 2, verses 2 and 4. Write down a vision. Make it legible on clay tablets so that anyone can read it. For this vision is for a time yet to come. It deals with the end and will not deceive. If it seems delayed, just wait for it. It will definitely come. It will not be late. Now the proud, his life is not virtuous, but the righteous by his faithfulness will have life. Be patient, says God. Now, God's answer to the problem that he's going to allow the Babylonians to invade Judah, thereby clean up the mess, well, Habakkuk wants an answer, but he doesn't like that answer. Especially, he doesn't like the part about the Babylonians, because they're much worse than the Judeans. How could God use nasty Nebuchadnezzar? I like that nasty Nebuchadnezzar to clean up the mess in Judea. So Habakkuk asked the question and received an answer, but he doesn't like the answer. So he asked another question. Did you ever receive an answer to prayer? You didn't especially like, but you kept on praying, hoping that God would change his mind? Well, here's what Habakkuk says. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch and see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Old Habakkuk, he's saying, I'm going to wait for another answer, but I don't expect I'm going to like it, so I'm ready with my response. Well, God answers again. He says, don't worry about the Babylonians. They'll get theirs too. He does that in 18 verses. Then he says, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth keep silence before him. In other words, that's all I'm going to say on the matter. It's time for you to be quiet and accept it. Read verse 4, chapter 2. God says, 
something that we probably have repeated over and over. And it struck Martin Luther in the 6th century. The just shall live by faith. Now, there are two components to that statement. The first says, there must be faith. And the other says, we must live by faith. There's faith, and then there is faithfulness. Faith is what we believe. Faithfulness is acting according to what we believe. And so now, what does Habakkuk do? Does he act on his faith? Well, in spite of his questions about what God is doing and can be faithful, here's what he says. In fact, he doesn't say it, he sings it. It's a hymn. Yeah. Now, singing a psalm in those days was not like singing today. It was more like chanting. Habakkuk's song of praise might have sounded like this. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of love shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls yet i will rejoice in the lord i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god of my salvation yet i will yet i will what a sentence that follows we should write that verse on a piece of paper and tack it all over the house frame it Say it out loud several times a day. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. We should say that when we don't even like what's happening in the world. We should say that when we don't, don't like what's happening in our lives. We should still say that because God is still the God of the universe. He knows what he's doing. Be patient, he says. Know that the Lord is in his temple and let the earth keep silence before him. Know that the God, know that God sometimes seems to be inactive, but he is involved. Know that God is holy. Know that God hears and answers prayers. Know that God sometimes gives unexpected answers to our prayers. Know that God is just and God is good. Know that the righteous live by faith and faithfulness and then praise Him and bring glory to Him. How can we do that? How can we submit to His will in all things? Well, well we can be content with what God has given us Philippians, we can stop worrying knowing that God will take care of us. And in Philippians 4.13, we can rely on God for strength instead of relying on ourselves. And in Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4, we can help others and give the glory to God by praising Him with our mouths because we are called to be selfless and humble. And in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we can show love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in our lives. He can, we can say, yet I will. Knowing full will that none of these things are easy, no. Nor do they come naturally. Saying yet I will does not mean we will escape difficulties, challenges, questions. But this, yet I will, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. The opportunity to see our problems through the possibilities of the Almighty God. It is through faith in Jesus Christ that we can say, yet I will. 
the transformation of our lives is possible. And when we submit to his will, we bring glory to God. And then, with Habakkuk, we can sing, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.